In this video, we're going to be checking out the rocket burner. This is a debriefing to figure out exactly what happened during this melt the other day. It's pretty cool stuff took place. Hey, what's up, fellas? Just wanted to do another debriefing of the rocket burner because something really cool happened that I wanted to show you guys. Um, when I pulled the burner out of the device, I found this. We completely elephant footed the freaking foundry, dude. You bogarted my foundry, bro. In 104 seconds, we pulled that off, but that's not all that happened here. I want to show you guys the cool thing that actually took place. We didn't just add oxygen to the burner. That's, that's not what happened. I didn't just walk over and turn on the oxygen. What we did was we crammed an extra 90 kilowatts of power into that space because we started off with a 150 kilowatt flame. But I did not just walk over and turn on the oxygen. So let's look into what I did here and get deep down into the details of what actually happened. All right, guys, what we're looking at here is a foundry furnace running at about 150 kilowatts of power at just under four cubic foot per minute at 125 PSI. Problem is, I'm finding that I cannot get past 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit at that four cubic foot. So we're gonna have to cram more air into this thing. But another amazing feature about the rocket burner isn't just that we're gonna add oxygen to this 150 kilowatt flame. I've just turned up the power to 240 kilowatts. So what we're gonna do is turn the oxygen on with the power set at this high and that's going to enable us to cram an additional 90 kilowatts of boost into the furnace. So rather than just crank on the oxygen at 150 kilowatts and melt everything down, including the burner, we are taking another angle at it here, taking another road, and we're adding more power to the furnace and capitalizing on the opportunity to burn more fuel in that small area. You can see there the oxygen has been turned on now and it's going to start showering off. There's a couple pieces of metal sticking out past the top of the crucible there and that's kind of what we see happening. But that's kind of the secret to what actually happened here. We did not just turn the oxygen on to 150 kilowatt flame. We turned the power up to 240 kilowatts and that enabled us to bring the the furnace conditions back down to where they were with only a, like a one foot flame coming out of the top because that is the optimum setting when you're running this thing. So that's kind of a cool little inner hidden secret about what we actually did here. We... Well guys, I just gave it a good chiseling. This is hard as diamond. I am going to have one heck of a time getting that out there. Okay, so in addition to that, I also noticed another event that took place that I wasn't very happy about. The device struggled to approach 2,500 degrees this time around, and I think I know why. The back pressure from the air compressor was as high as 125 PSIs. We had a very long hose set up on there, but I believe the restriction in the nozzle is too high and that it needs bored out. We were only running at four cubic foot per minute, and I have a hunch that four cubic foot per minute of air and that space has a temperature limitation, a thermodynamic limit. So we are gonna bore this thing out. We're gonna bore it out to a 454 and we're gonna see if we can get it up to 2,650 degrees again because last time I got one of these burners up to 2,650 degrees without the oxygen lances, I had it hooked up to that massive air compressor over there. And the hose was charged to 135 PSIs. That's kind of what happened in the experiment. So I'm gonna bore this thing out and we're gonna fire this thing up to see if my theory is correct. We're about ready to start testing again. Ooh, hold it still. Best fly swatter in the world, I'll tell you what. All right, we got this lid resurfaced and ground down, and we got the inside of this thing all chiseled out, and I threw a thin set layer in there to re-level out that floor, so we're ready to roll. Turn her back in. 
with the modification in place. And we're gonna see if we can't make it hit 2,650 degrees today without the oxygen. I'm not doing any oxygen today. I became concerned halfway through the oxygen test and it was because we were not able to go over four cubic foot per minute on air. I had way too much hose on the system and the hose I was using was too small. That does have a factor. So today's test is to see if I know what I'm talking about. So here's the test charge. All right, first thing I noticed right off the bat is uh, this cat needs a haircut, for real. You gotta represent, man, come on. All right, so we got this thing lit here. And what I'm trying to show you here is that we're gonna get this thing turned up to 240 kilowatts and the flame is not gonna be sticking that high up out of the burner because we're gonna be putting another entire cubic foot per minute of air into this system. All right, so for the purpose of contrast, here is your 240 kilowatts. That's 0.4 liters per minute and we're right under five cubic foot per minute. This is some footage from the last test showing you what 240 kilowatt looks like with at four cubic foot per minute of air. So with just that extra cubic foot per minute, we're burning all that extra fuel in there, similar to the way we was with the oxygen. So we've got that 90 kilowatt boots. However, we start to have a problem very quickly and the air system cuts out on me here. We're back down to about four cubic foot per minute. And unfortunately, as a result, we're only uh, doing about 180 kilowatt. You can see there, I just shook the inline dryer. Look at all the gunk that comes flying up through there. So I went ahead and deleted the inline dryer real quick because it's just saturated with crap at this point. And I think the whole system's a little gummed up as a result. So did a quick delete on the fly to uh, get her set up. And I want to show you guys something. You see this constant flow of water that's traveling through here? That is why you've got to have an inline dryer. That's what's traveling through your air hose at a constant state. And that steam that's created is going to rob the furnace of a lot of energy. So you have to get that out of there when you're trying to hit these top temperatures. So here I am trying to get an actual reading. Sometimes I think the flame from that fire is messing with the gun. I'm not happy at all. Today's experiment was a total failure. We didn't even hit 2,500 degrees, and it's because we're stuck at four cubic foot per minute. So tomorrow I'm gonna uh, bust out the big guns. I'm gonna get a better hose. I'm lacking the proper hose to do this job. And we're just gonna fire up the big air compressor. I don't want the air compressor to be the limiting factor. It just started to melt it. So I was wrong. We did hit the temperature needed to just start to melt the route iron there. It just started to go. It takes 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit to do that. We were just starting to melt. There's the cast iron. We melted that like 11 minutes in. Just to kind of show you that they are two different metals. Got some steam rolling out of there. This thing's ready for a cleaning. It was completely saturated. You can see how wet, nasty, and oily this stuff is. Pretty bad shape. So I'm gonna have to change all that out with some fresh stuff here. That was part of what killed us. When you start getting a bunch of dirt and gunk going through the line, all that gunk and oil can start to carburize in this area right in here. And flakes of carbon will build up in there, 
and restrict flow. I think that might be part of what was happening. Another thing that was happening, we had so much hose on there, all those little water drips that are running through the line cause eddy currents in the air, and that just significantly reduces the airflow. It's just tumbling air in there. So we're going to have to try this again. Today's experiment was somewhat of a success, but it failed in the end because... I wasn't able to get over the four cubic foot per minute like I wanted for a long duration. We did manage to melt the wrought iron pipe, but just barely. I'm not even going to count that. So, we got to try this again.